गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द थ्रोम्बोसिस एंड इट्स पाथोफिजिओलोजी सो टू डिफाइन थ्रोम्बोसिस दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सॉलिड मास इन सर्कुलेशन फ्रॉम द कंस्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑफ फ्लोइंग ब्लड एंड द मास हुई चीज फॉर्म्ड दैट इज कॉल्ड थ्रोम्बस दैट मींस इन द कंस्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑफ फ्लोइंग ब्लड इनसाइड द सर्कुलेशन इनसाइड द ब्लड वेसल इफ देयर इज प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सॉलिड मास इज देयर दैट प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड थ्रोम्बोसिस एंड द मास व्हिच इज फॉर्म्ड इनसाइड द सर्कुलेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड थ्रोम्बस अनदर टर्म व्हिच इज इनकरेक्टली यूज्ड एज सिनोनिमस वर्ड विद द थ्रोम्बोसिस दैट इज कॉल्ड ब्लड क्लॉटिंग देयर इज डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन द देयर आर डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन द ब्लड क्लॉट एंड द थ्रोम्बोसिस थ्रोम्बोसिस इज कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय द इवेंट्स दैट इन्वॉल्व्स एक्टिवेशन ऑफ प्लेटलेट्स व्हेयर एज द क्लॉटिंग इन्वॉल्व्स ओनली कन्वर्शन ऑफ सॉल्युबल फाइब्रोनोजन टू इनसॉल्युबल फाइब्रिन सो द क्लॉटिंग इज द कोआगुलेशन ऑफ ब्लड इन विट्रो इन विट्रो मीन दैट इज इन टेस्टिव आउटसाइड द बॉडी दैट इज कॉल्ड क्लॉटिंग सो क्लॉटिंग वर्ड इज इनकरेक्टली यूज एज ए सिनोनिम ऑफ थ्रोम्बोसिस बट इट इज एक्चुअली नॉट सिनोनिम्स थ्रोम्बोसिस इनवर्व द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एक्टिवेशन ऑफ प्लेटलेट्स क्लॉटिंग इज ड्यू टू कन्वर्सन ऑफ फाइब्रोनोजेन इन सॉल्युबल फाइब्रोनोजेन इन टू इन सॉल्युबल फाइब्रिन स्ट्रैंड देन देर आर अनदर टर्म दैट इज कॉल्ड हेमाटोमा हुई आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड हेमाटोमा इज द एक्स्ट्रा भास्कुलर एकुमुलेसन ऑफ ब्लड दैट इज इन टू द टीस्यूज इफ देर इज एकुमुलेसन ऑफ ब्लड इन टू द टीस्यूज एंड रेजल्टेंट स्वेलिंग इज देयर दैट इज कॉल्ड हेमाटोमा देन अनदर टर्म इज हेमोस्टैटिक प्लग दिस इज डिफाइंड एज द ब्लड क्लॉट्स फॉर्म इन हेल्दी इंडिविजुअल एट दि सैट ऑफ ब्लीडिंग दैट मीन्स इफ देर इज इंजुरी टू ब्लड भेसल्स देन देर इज ब्लड क्लट इज फर्म दैट इज कॉल्ड हेमोस्टैटिक प्लग सो इन द सिंपल वर्ड दिस हेमोस्टैटिक प्लग मे बी कन्सिडर्ड एज द सिम्पलेस्ट फर्म अफ थ्रम्बोसिस at the cut end of the vessel blood vessel if there is injury to the blood vessel so hemostatic plug is formed the process is same uh, as thrombogenesis so this is that's why this hemostatic plug is called the simplest form of thrombosis so hemostatic plug are useful because they stop escape of blood and plasma whereas थ्रोम्बाई हुई चीज डेवलप्ड इन द अनरपचर्ड कार्डियोभास्कुलर सिस्टम दैट इज इनसाइड द कार्डियोभास्कुलर सिस्टम दैट इज नॉट रपचर्ड दैट मे बी लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ सम हार्मफुल इफेक्ट्स सो हेमोस्टैटिक प्लग बिकॉज इट इज फॉर्म फॉर्म इन द साइट ऑफ इंजुरी सो दैट विल स्टॉप द ब्लड एंड प्लाज्मा सो दैट इज लाइफ सेविंग बट in in hemostatic plug and uh, the thrombosis the process is same so one process hemostatic plug saves the life by stopping the escape of blood and plasma whereas if the same process the thrombi is formed in the unruptured cardiovascular system so that may be life threatening due to the following harmful effects number 1 that is ischemic injury secondly that is thromboembolism so in case of ischemic injury that means if there is thrombi is developed so that may decrease that will obstruct the pathway that may decrease or stop the blood supply to part of an organ or tissue and cause ischemia and that ischemia may result in the infarction and 
what is thromboembolism? That is thrombus, the mass which is formed inside the vessel. So that is called thrombus. So this thrombus or its part gets dislodged and that may be around carried along the bloodstream as embolus to lodge in the distant vessel and after lodging that may the same that may cause ischemic injury to that part. Now coming to what is the pathophysiology of thrombosis. You know that human being possesses inbuilt system by which the blood remains in fluid state normally and guards against the hazard of thrombosis and hemorrhage. That is our inbuilt system. Their blood always remains in fluid state, that flows through the blood vessel and there are some mechanism which guards against the hazards of thrombosis and hemorrhage. However, if there is injury to the blood vessel that immediately initiates the hemostatic repair mechanism or thrombogenesis that stops the bleeding from the site of injury. So to explain this process of thrombosis, Virchow the scientist, he described three primary events which predispose to thrombus formation. That is called Virchow's, Virchow's triad. So first thing is the endothelial injury. Second event is the altered blood flow. Third event is the hypercoagulability of the blood. So this is the Virchow's triad, that is endothelial injury, altered blood flow and hyper coagulability. So to these three primary events, there is addition of two, activation of two systems, that is the activation of platelets and the activation of coagulation system. These two activated system is added to these three primary events, that is endothelial injury, altered blood flow and hypercoagulability. Now coming to, so I will describe one by one. So coming to endothelial injury, uh, when there is injury to the vessel wall, then the subendothelial extracellular matrix components, these are, these collagen, uh, elastin, fibronectin. So these are the extracellular matrix components in you know, uh, acronym we call it as ECM, these are thrombogenic and they play important roles in initiating hemostasis and thrombosis. But normally the integrity of blood vessel, vessel wall is important for maintaining the normal blood flow and there are some intact, if endothelium is intact, so most important thing is the endothelium must be intact. If endothelium is intact, it has some uh, functions which, uh, which causes the fluidity of the blood and there is no thrombosis. So this uh, intact endothelial wall protects the flowing blood from thrombogenic influence of the subendothelium. So this subendothelium is always thrombogenic. So if endothelial wall is intact, so, so that protects from the thrombogenesis. Secondly, uh, this endothelium releases some anti-thrombotic factors like heparin, uh, thrombomodulin. So anti this endo intact endothelium that releases anti-thrombotic factors. So in these two mechanisms, the endothelium, intact endothelium prevents the thrombogenesis. But if there is injury to the vessel, then this subendothelial extracellular matrix component will be exposed and these are highly thrombogenic. So if there is injury to vessel wall, 
Secondly, second mechanism of the body is if there is when there is injury to vessel wall, that causes vasoconstriction of small blood vessels briefly so as to reduce the blood loss. This is the second mechanism. Then this endothelial injury, I think you can understand intact endothelium is very important. If there is endothelial injury, that plays an important role in the formation of arterial thrombi and thrombi of the heart, especially of the left ventricle. So origin of the thrombi is from various uh, sites. That may be from the arterial, that is called arterial thrombi. That may be from the heart, that is called cardiac thrombi. That may be from the veins, that is called venous thrombi. That may be from the capillary, that is called capillary thrombi. Besides these, there are some other factors that may also cause vascular injury which lead to formation of thrombi. That means there are some diseases that may also cause vascular injury and that may cause exposure of subendothelial extracellular matrix to the blood. So these are endothelial injury in case of myocardial infarction, myocarditis, if there is cardiac surgery, if there is um, prosthetic valves uh, implant, ulcerated plaques in advanced atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis there is a hardening of the wall, then hemodynamic stress in hypertension, in that case also there may be vascular injury, in case of arterial diseases, diabetes mellitus also may cause vascular injury, then there are some endogenous chemical agents that is hypercholesterolemia and there are some endotoxins that may cause vascular injury. And finally, there is some exogenous chemical agents such as cigarette smoke. So these are the factors which may cause vascular injury, which exposes the subendothelial extracellular matrix, which may cause the formation of thrombi. Then coming to second event is the role of that I have told you. This is the one of the primary event is the subendothelial injury, and there will be activation of platelets. So, most important is the role of platelets. So, when there is endothelial injury, the platelets come to play a central role in normal hemostasis as well as thrombosis. So, the sequence of events, these are, first there will be platelet adhesion, then when platelet is adhered to the subendothelial matrix, then there are some Release reaction will be there, two types of granules are released, that is alpha granules and dense bodies that will release some uh, factors which help in the activation of coagulation system. Then third is the platelet aggregations. So coming to uh, platelet uh, adhesion, that is the, there are some receptor present in the platelet that is called glycoprotein 1B receptor which is present on the platelet that recognizes the first the site of endothelial injury and the, the circulating platelets adhere to the exposed extracellular matrix that is called primary aggregation. Then there are some factors which are synthesized by the endothelial cells that is von Willebrand's factor, von Willebrand's factor which are synthesized by the endothelial cells that binds to this glycoprotein 1B receptor on the platelets and further forms a firm adhesion of platelets with extracellular matrix. You might have heard about the von Willebrand disease where there is bleeding. Why there is bleeding? In case of von Willebrand disease, there is deficiency of this factor. So when there is deficiency factor, so there will be no platelet aggregation. So there will be bleeding. Similarly, if there is deficiency of this receptor also, that may also cause the bleeding. So either deficiency of von Willebrand factor and deficiency of glycoprotein 1 receptor, in both the cases there will be bleeding. Then coming to platelet release reaction. When there is platelet is uh, exposed to the subendothelial matrix, then this platelet will be activated. So when this, these activated platelets then undergo release reaction by which the platelet granules are released to the extra. There are two types of granules that is dense bodies and alpha granules. 
so the dense body liberates adenosine diphosphate that is called adp which is the activator of platelets that is more that is a potent platelet aggregator ionic calcium which is helping in the activation of coagulation system then 5 ht that is called serotonin histamine epinephrine these are released by the dense bodies then alpha granules these produces fibrinogen fibronectin platelet derived growth factor pdgf platelet derived growth factor platelet factor 4 and thrombospondin so these are the things which is required for the coagulation system because there are simultaneous activation of coagulation system i will uh, describe later on then coming to platelet aggregation when there is release of adp adenosine diphosphate which is a potent platelet aggregator by the dense bodies then there will be aggregation of additional platelets takes place that is called secondary aggregation so this lead to the formation of temporary hemostatic plug so bleeding will stop however the stable hemostatic plug is formed by the action of fibrin thrombin and thromboxin a2 this will be so this is the temporary hemostatic plug to stop the bleeding first then stability comes by the action of fibrin thrombin and thromboxin a2 in this figure you can see here this red line is the sub endothelial collagen when there is injury to the endothelial cell of the vessel then extracellular matrix component of the sub endothelium is exposed to the blood stream so to this exposure glycoprotein 1b receptor which is present in the platelets that will recognize the site of injury and the platelet aggregation starts there are in three steps that is platelet addition platelet release reaction and platelet aggregation then to this there is simultaneous activation of uh, coagulation system which uh, adds to the formation of fibrin strands from fibrogen uh, by the activation of thrombin and fibrinogen so there will be formation of solid thrombus at the site of injury so this completes the uh, part of pathophysiology of thrombosis so in the next class i will discuss the mechanism of coagulation system altered blood flow and hypercoagulability thank you